Welcome back to Watergum Online. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Watergum Cane Toads program and we'll focus specifically on toad busting, which is the collection and removal of adult cane toads from the environment. But first, let's talk about some basic cane toad facts. My name's Kristen and I also work for Watergum on the invasive species programs. Cane toads are amphibians that originally come from South America. In South America, they are really big sizes compared to the ones in Australia. This is because over the last 80 years that cane toads have been in Australia, they've had some adaptations to fit in better with the environment. Some of these adaptations include shorter legs so they can move faster, as well as decreased size. Cane toads can live to be up to 15 years old. Their colours and patterns can change drastically. They can be beige to dark black and have no pattern, to spots and stripes. They also change their colours to fit in with their environment. For example, you could have a cane toad in a dark shady area who appears to be really dark and black. If you move that same cane toad onto a light sandy beach and come back after some time, it would have changed its colour to blend in with the sand and be a light beige. Like most amphibians, cane toads lay their eggs in water. Cane toad eggs are very different from native frog eggs. Cane toads lay their eggs in long jelly strings, while native frog eggs are in lumps of jelly and foam. Many people don't realise that cane toads are toxic in every life stage, from eggs to tadpoles to tiny toads to full-grown adult toads. So how did toads get to Australia? Well, in 1935, 102 were brought over from their native South America. And they were brought over to try and control the cane beetle. So cane beetles were wreaking havoc in the cane sugar industry. It was thought that the toads would predate the beetles and the larvae and would clean up this problem for Australian farmers. But unfortunately, this really didn't go well. So firstly, the beetles have live really high in the sugar cane, far too high for the toes to reach because they actually can't climb very well. And the larvae, well they were in the ground and the toes should have been able to get them. But the time of year when the larvae are present is the time of the year when the sugar cane fields are cut down. So the toes wouldn't go out into the fields for fear of exposure and predation. So unfortunately, this plan failed miserably, and instead, cane toads monopolised and spread around Australia, going from the original 102 to over 2 billion today. So why are cane toads such a problem in Australia? One of the biggest problems with cane toads is the fact that they're highly toxic. In South America, where they're from, many of the animals have evolved immunity to this toxin, but over in Australia, it's deadly to our native species and to our pets. So most of it is in the paratoid glands on the back of their neck. The big bulbous glands, you'll be able to see them clearly on every cane toad. 
This is also a really good way to tell them apart from our native frogs who don't have these big paratoid glands. Any animal that tries to predate a cane toad is in danger of dying if coming into contact with that toxin. Cane toads themselves have insatiable appetites. They'll prey on anything that's smaller than them and they can eat hundreds of insects per night. They take all the food resources from away from native species and this enables them to completely monopolize habitat. Cane toads also cause big problems for the agricultural industry. And that's mainly because they really like dung beetles. They can eat up to 200 a night. They're also really easy prey. A cane toad can simply find a pile of dung, sit on it, and the dung beetles will come to the toad. Now, when they eat all the dung beetles, there's nothing clearing away the dung, and this causes a massive increase in parasites and is really bad for animal health. Agricultural dams can also be cane toad breeding holes, and this is really not great for your water quality. What you can really do is try and keep cane toads out of your dams, and potentially even store your water underground. If you do this, you'll lose a lot less through evaporation, and you won't breed as many mosquitoes. It's definitely a better idea if it's a possibility. And the final reason that cane toads have been able to spread so far over Australia is their incredible breeding capacity. One female cane toad can lay 35,000 babies per clutch, and she can have two clutches per year. So that means one female can produce 70,000 babies per year. This is why toad busting is so important. If you remove one female from the environment, you're potentially removing 70,000 future babies that year alone. So how can we control cane toads? Well, there's a number of things that we can do, and I'll tell you about them right now. One thing property owners can do is plant lots of native vegetation around their dams and waterways. Cane toads like easy access water, and if it's too difficult for them to get in, they won't bother. Alternatively, you can put fencing around your dam, but this does stop everything from accessing the waterway. So it's not really ideal for a lot of situations, especially if you're trying to encourage native wildlife. Something else you may have heard about is tadpole trapping. This is a big part of Watergum's cane toad program. So if you'd like to know more information about tadpole trapping, head over to our website. So let's talk about toad busting. Toad busting is a very successful method for cane toad control. Now remember, Female cane toads can have up to 70,000 eggs per year, so removing just one female can have a massive impact on populations.
So firstly, what equipment do you need? So now that you've got all your equipment, let's make sure you know how to catch a toad. It's pretty simple. Firstly, please put on your gloves. Cane toads are toxic. There is toxin in their skin. If you pick them up without gloves on, your hands tingle and it's really not very nice. So do wear your gloves. We would always advise you to wear some reusable gloves like these. One, they're much better quality. They won't split and crack and then you can get yucky hands. And two, you can reuse them uh, for a really long time so it's, it's much less wasteful. You can use one of these if you want. This is really good, it will save you back. You can simply pick them up, you've got them in there, and then you can pop them in your bucket. Or, you simply use your hands. When you see a toad, lean down and grab him quickly. It's not difficult to grab a cane toad. They are well aware that their toxin is their only defense. So when you're walking along and they see a big predator coming up towards them, most of them don't run away because they know they can't outrun you. Most of them will just sit there and wait for you to grab them. Once you've grabbed your cane toads, you can put them in your bucket. Now I use this bucket. I particularly like this one because it's got a self-locking lid and it's quite small. So you can carry it around your garden and the lock is on. Once you put it down and let the handle down, you can open your lid and pop in your cane toad. The ideal time to go toad busting is just after dusk. This is when cane toads are emerging from their hiding places to go hunting for insects. Dusk is also the time where a lot of other animals come out as well, so make sure to use your torch and keep an eye out for native species. So where are you going to find cane toads? Well, a really good place to start is waterways. Remember, cane toads need waterways to breed. So they're always going to be down here, particularly at the start of the season. And this particular area is a very good cane toad environment. There's lots of mud, lots of vegetation, leaves, lots of places for insects. That's where you're going to find cane toads. Cane toads also love lawns. They love grass, especially when it's damp. You'll often find them towards the edge. This means that they can run and hide very quickly if a predator comes along. So ovals, lawns, anywhere with big expanses of grass and bushy edges are a good place to look for cane toads. Another good place to look for cane toads, particularly in residential areas, is areas where there's lots of street lighting. Where there's street lighting, you get lots of insects hanging around, attracted by the lights. So you'll often find cane toads congregating in the floodlit area. Water gum has a strict humane euthanasia policy and we require you to euthanize your toads in the most humane method available to the general public, which is the fridge freezer method. It couldn't be simpler. You put your toads in the fridge for a period of up to 24 hours and this makes them slip into a comatose state called torpor. 
Once they're in this state, their pain receptors are shut off. Then you can move them to the freezer. This means that when they're frozen, they are not aware of the ice crystals forming in their veins, which is actually a painful process. It's really important to us that you're humane to cane toads. It's not their fault they're on the wrong continent. They were put here by humans. The best way to euthanize toads by the fridge freezer method is to actually have a separate fridge freezer in your garage or something like that. Totally for toads. We understand that for most people this isn't possible though and you're going to have to put them in your indoor kitchen fridge and freezer. To make your family members a bit happier about this, we strongly suggest that you have two containers, toad dedicated containers, one in the fridge and one in the freezer at all times. This means that you can go out toad busting and then you can come straight in and deposit your catch into your fridge container. This will keep everything separate from any other items in your fridge. Once they have gone into the comatose host state, you can transfer them to your freezer container. So what do you do with your humanely frozen toads? Well, ideally you'll have a drop-off point near you. Now it's going to take us a while to set these up, but we do have drop-off points on the Gold Coast and in the Tweed Shire. So email us for more information. If you don't have access to a drop-off point yet, then you can put them in your compost. Toads make excellent compost. You just need to make sure that you bury them very deep so that animals can't dig them up. And if you have a hot compost system, even better. The toxin will break down so fast, it's completely safe for your gardening. If you want more information about a hot compost system, you can find details of how to create one on our website. And finally, if you can't do either of these things, you can put them in a bag and put them out with your general waste collection. So if you're doing opting for this method, you might just wanna make sure that you time your toe busting with your waste collection day. You can always email us at canetoads at watergum.org. Thank you so much for joining this initiative. Thank <laughs> you.